I'm going to make a plane that is about the same length as this one, about eight inches long. I find that to be a really nice size for a smoothing plane. The blade I'm going to use is one and three quarter. I've got this chunk of maple. It's, it's longer and wider than I need. It's got a big knot in it. It doesn't really matter too much what the grain direction is. This, the grain on this is, is, I guess, be flats on. I'm going to use this side of it so it's a little more rift. I would, in general, not be too concerned about the grain direction, although I would try to avoid quarter sawn material on the bottom of the plane. Just because uh, the ray flake, when it's when it's perfectly parallel to a surface, it's not quite as smooth as, as other cut. So I think a rift sawn surface works works best. In order to start, I want to square this up, and I want it to be roughly an inch and a half wider than the width of my blade. So that would mean I need at least three and a quarter inches. So what I'm going to do, I'm, I'm not actually going to do that in this case because it is bigger. I'm going to uh, flatten the what will be the bottom of the plane. I'm going to square up an edge. And then I'm going to cut off a piece that's one of the sides. I want that to be roughly three-eighths of an inch. I'm going to cut another piece that's going to be the center part. That's going to end up one and three quarter plus a little more than a sixteenth. I want that centerpiece one and thirteen sixteenths after I've milled it. So I'm going to cut it a little bit bigger than that, maybe one and seven eighths. And then I'll cut another piece for the other side. Once again, roughly three eighths, maybe a little bit more. And then I'll surface those down to my final thicknesses. So here I'm cutting the side piece off and notice that I don't have the blade all the way up just to ease the load on the saw and make it easier to push that maple through. So I raise the blade up a little bit above the surface because I'm cutting through the push stick and continue to cut like that. Back at the jointer to joint the face that was just cut. Then back to the table saw, this time cutting the center section. Back to the table saw, setting the fence to the same thickness as the first side, and then cutting that one also. Usually I mark this before I cut it, but sometimes it's actually easier afterwards. I want to note the orientation of the parts here. So I've got it back the way it was uh, originally. And you know, once I cut out the center part for the blade, I need to know where the front and back go. So I'm, I'm going to uh, make a triangle here and then the same thing towards the back. And I'm going to put two at this end just to distinguish them. So next up, I'm going to mill these parts to final thickness. Now, because I jointed one surface on each of them, I can just run them through the planer and get them down to my final thickness. So I'm, I'm shooting for about 5 sixteenths on the sides no less than that, and, and maybe a sixteenth over, a touch over my blade width, so thirteen sixteenths. So I've got my parts milled to thickness now. So the sides are just a little over 5 sixteenths and the center is, is a little over 1 and 13 sixteenths. I've got the uh, blank cut to length now. It was a little bit longer before. So I'm making an 8 inch plane. Uh, this is now 9 inches long. 
The next thing I need to do is mark for the cuts for the for the bed and the mouth. So I want to come back about a third of the way from the front. So this is nine inches. So I'm going to come back three three inches. Put a mark there. And I want the bed, of course, to be back here. Now, I would say typically make it 45 degrees. I'm going to make this a little bit higher. I'm going to make it 50. So I've got a protractor here. I'll set that to 50 and mark that. On the front, if, if the bed is 45 per Fink's book and what works well, you want the front cut to be 62. Now, because I've raised this a few degrees, five degrees, I'm going to lower this one five degrees. So if this is 50 instead of 62, I'm going to make this 57. If you go higher than 50 degrees, at some point you can't make this cut low enough as a straight cut. And then you, you need to actually make a curved cut. So I get a little more complicated. So the, I'm going to stick with 50 and 57 over here. Now I'm leaving a little little room between these marks just because the, the blade on the uh, chop saw is going to have a curve. And now I can go make those cuts. Now I'm I'm actually going to use the, the marker on the chop saw when I make these, but it's still good to just have a reference and uh, give yourself a sanity check when you're at the saw. One more thing before I go over there. I noticed here that I, when I make this cut, I'm basically going to cut off my marks here. So I'm going to make another set of marks up right up at the front just to make sure I keep track of where those parts go. I've got the chop saw set up to make this cut. Uh, this is the 57 degree cut. Now, I'm not going to get a 57 degree reading on the chop saw because it measures from, from 90 over. So 57 from 90 degrees is 33. So that's the setting I have on the chop saw. I've got a backer here that I've, that I've cut into. So I know where it's going to cut. I know my part's fully supported. I'm cutting off this piece. So I need to you know, move it over a little bit from my cut line here because, you know, of course, I've got the width of the blade to deal with and I can uh, take a look there and see how that looks. To make the other cut, you know, ideally I would flip this over, but I, this surface on my block is still rough. I never surfaced that. So I'm going to turn the saw the other way. Now, the, the downside to that is now I'm cutting, you know, towards where I'm hanging on to the material. It's, it's much nicer if, if the saw is tilted away from the way I'm cutting, but I, I don't really have any other choice here. So I'll go ahead and uh, move this around to the other side. So I've got this set up now. I've got the saw set at 40, which is going to give me a 50 degree bed angle. I've moved my backer so it's in line with the saw there and I'm ready to make that cut. So I just need to make sure you know, I keep my hand out of the way when I do that. The chop saw doesn't typically leave a really flat surface there, and we, we really want that flat. Now, in the Fink book, he hand planes that, which is certainly possible, but it's, it's difficult to do. You've got, you know, end grain maple, which is difficult to plane, and a small surface. So I do this on the disc sander. So before I do that, I, I take a look and you hold this up to a light and see what you've got. I mean, this one looks pretty flat, but there's some bumps, you know, the blade vibrates, things like that. 
So I'm going to go to the disc sander and get this as flat as I can. So I'm going to use a very light touch, make sure I'm on a, a good part of the disc. Really want to make sure the disc is square to the table or the table is square to the disc. And I want to just get that as flat, flat as possible. If it's slightly concave, that's okay, but it cannot be convex. If it's humped at all, the plane's not going to work very well. The blade's not going to sit flat. It's going to chatter a little bit. So either dead flat or slightly concave, and uh, we'll be good to go. The front part isn't nearly as critical. I mean, it's not critical at all because, right, that's just where the shavings are going to come out. But we've got to get this part flat. I've got the bed nice and flat now. It is just slightly concave. I found that depending on where I use the disc sander, it gave me slightly different surfaces. And you'll find that sometimes the disc isn't perfectly flat. So you really, like I said, really want to check that. So that's looking great. I also created the eighth inch chamfer at, at this end. So that, that'll help out later on. The next thing I need to do is, is draw on one of the sides where these parts are going to go. So I've got the side sitting here and I'm going to use this piece of wood to use as a reference for the bottom. I'm going to bring these in just, just a little bit from, from either side. And I want to put the blade on, so I've taken the chip breaker off. And I want it to sit so it's about an eighth of an inch up from the bottom. Making sure everything is situated there. Okay, so that looks that looks good. Everything's flat. I've roughly centered on the bottom or on the side, about an eighth of an inch up. Making sure I'm down. There we go. So I'll now take a sharp pencil, put a couple of light lines there. That's what I want. There are a couple of ways to make the slot or the dado for clearance of the uh, chip breaker screw. The, the way that uh, David Fink describes is the way I like to do it, although my jig's just slightly different, and that is uh, we create a template and basically pattern route it. So, so if we position this over the surface, we can take a bearing guided router bit and, and route that out. That I think is, is the easiest way to go, but you, you have to make the jig and not that that's a big, that big a deal, but uh, still have to have it. The other way to do it is to put a, a three quarter inch straight bit in a router table, raise the bit up, set the fence so that you're centered on the bit, and then basically, you know, if this if this is the table, and and say this is your fence, we would just route into the bit and and stop at the appropriate spot. And you know, of course, I'd put a mark on the side to know so I know when to stop. That works fine too. The, the downside to that is you're, you're kind of flying blind because the bit's underneath. And uh, it's just easier and simpler with, with the jig. So we're gonna go ahead and use the jig for this. I've got the piece clamped in a vise here, just, just up in the air. Now my jig is, is three quarters of an inch wide or the, the dado that it makes is three quarters of an inch wide. It was just made with a, a straight three quarter inch uh, router bit. So I need to mark on here where this is going to sit. Now I don't I don't have a fence on here like David does because I, I use this for various uh, width bodies. So what I'm going to do I'm going to find the middle of this. So I'm just going to center uh, two inch marks 
on here so there's the middle at one inch I'm going to come over about three eighths and three eighths and then to, to really make sure it's centered I'll align on those if anything I wanted a touch narrower and I'm just going to draw some lines on here and I want to come up about three quarters from the bottom that that provides enough clearance so I want to be like that so I'm going to then you know put this on here and we'll clamp that in place and then go ahead and route it now in order to do that this needs to be flush with this because I'm going to I'm going to clamp this to the to the table so I'm going to run this down I'll hold that like that just to feel that it's flush so everything's everything's flush there that's nice and tight now I can see my lines through there I'll just center the jig on here on those lines clamp it in place and, and we'll route it I've got my uh, pattern bit in the router so this is a half inch pattern bit it's a very short cutter length it's made for routing uh, hinge mortises so what I'm going to do I'm going to set this on here and run that down till it just barely touches there okay so that's just hitting the piece I want to route and now I'm going to zero this so on this particular router I've got the zeros on that line and if I scoot this over I can run this down and I want to go this this uh, screw head is a little more than an eighth of an inch thick so if I go three sixteenths deep into my part I should be fine so there's there's a quarter that's an eighth, so there's three sixteenths. So I'll line that up like that, and I'll just you know come in and and go out on the other side of the uh, template. I want to you know do be doing a climb cut, so I'm going to come in on this side and then come out on that side. Okay, so that, that looks great. Ready to go to the next step.